During my PhD research, I found myself on a quest for a best practice model in experimental archaeology. The more I searched for it, the more the crucial issue of ethics emerged with striking prominence. Having an ethical perspective in our research activity means being aware of our moral choices on a daily basis regarding our work environment, how we communicate our results, how we approach our research practice from a sustainability point of view. In other words, our research integrity, i.e. how we actually perform our research activity. The Singapore Statement for Research Integrity is based on the concept that, regardless of the philosophical assumptions, the theoretical frameworks, the diversity of disciplines, and the geographical location, there are ethical standards in research which provide a baseline for all. It is based on four major principles – honesty, accountability, professional courtesy, and good stewardship – which flow into 14 responsibilities. The first of which is integrity. We need to take full responsibility of our research trustworthiness. And naturally, we also need to adhere to regulations in this respect. The three following responsibilities deal specifically with the research activity. The method sections clarifies the protocol researchers need to use, starting with appropriate methods, followed by critical analysis, and finally with the distinction between research findings and interpretations. Just to focus on the last point, it would be very useful to ponder the difference between findings and interpretations in archaeology, even more so with experimental archaeology. The report section brings our attention as to how important it is for others to be able to verify and replicate our study, something that was already brought forward by Reynolds quite a few years ago. In the findings section, we see the invitation to share results as quickly as possible. And as naturally these responsibilities flow and are interrelated with each other, the need to have ethical standards extends also to the publication process. Experimental archaeologists might find it interesting to read the acknowledgement section. Point 9 is conflict of interest. And I would simply like to point out that the open disclosure of conflicts of interest, whatever their nature, is called for also in the proposal stage of research. Point 10 is important because it clarifies our responsibilities during communication activities, both with the public and the scholarly community. We should be able to distinguish between professional comments and our own personal opinions based on our own experiences. Responsibilities do not stop here. We need to engage in reporting irresponsible research practices. Institutions need to be prepared to deal with the reporting itself and are responsible for a healthy working environment which supports research integrity. Regarding this, I invite you to check your institution's existing policies on the matter. Finally, the last responsibility deals with the societal considerations. Researchers should evaluate the benefits and the risks for society that are embedded in their research activities, including environmental risks. By considering just the societal risk, remember the historical roots of the misuse of archaeology in the justification of power and the active, dynamic role that experimental archaeology has performed since the very start of the phenomenon at the end of the 19th century. The current global situation seems to indicate the need to deeply reflect on this issue. Moreover, experimental archaeology, as others before me have noticed, places itself between research and communication. This means that we are not just communicating our research results, we are actually also communicating how we perform our research at the same time. In some instances, the research context might coincide with the communication context such as in the case of educational institutions opening to the public and archaeological open-air museums in which experimental archaeology is performed as a research practice with the public. So please do not consider ethics at the very last moment or just to write your funding application. Consider it early on. Consider, for example, if you can justify your methods as appropriate for your research subject. And also consider that the inter- and multidisciplinarity of experimental archaeology often requires using ethical standards of research as applied in other disciplines. For example, if you are involving human participants in your research activity. Concluding, approaching research integrity issues in experimental archaeology allows researchers to improve their reflexivity and enhances their service to society while contributing in the creation of knowledge. Thank you.